Tonight on Connecticut's news station, some dreary weather in time for a busy holiday travel day. We're checking in with the experts about what we'll face on the roads and in the skies. And one community is opening an emergency warming center as the temperatures drop. A look at how this is being made possible. Plus, nixing the nip. A new campaign hopes to ban those small bottles of alcohol, but the group's facing some pushback. We'll hear the arguments. Overall, it's just an incredibly humbling experience. Anybody that goes through it, I would say it's it changes you as a person and it changes you for the better. And we're meeting the latest graduating class of Connecticut State Troopers. Now at 6, this is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Good evening. Thanks for joining us here on the Fox 61 News at 6. I'm Sarah Sanchez. And I'm Carmen Chow. December feels like the new April as we step into rain, fog, and warmer temperatures lately. Yeah, it feels so unseasonably warm Weird. out there. <laughs> Though some may say this is better than snow, the weather has still made it difficult for airlines and drivers. We spoke to two experts who provided suggestions to ensure you get to your New Year's plan safer and wiser. Thursday marked the busiest day of the year for travelers to head back home with hopes to make it just in time for New Year's festivities with family and friends. According to AAA, one million Connecticut residents were expected to travel for year-end holidays. This year, travel has increased. Uh, total travel is up 2.5 percent in Connecticut and New England as well, and that is coming back to what we've seen pre-pandemic. While airports have been seeing the yearly hustle and bustle, the roadways have been just as packed. Tracy Noble with AAA says 87% of people choose driving as their mode of transportation to get to and from their destination. But in recent days, the weather, more so specifically the fog, left travelers with a headache. The fog has been intense. It was uh, like, you know, Jurassic Park some of these days. As of Thursday, the majority of flights at Bradley International Airport are on time with no cancellations. But prior to Thursday, it was a different story. Josh Morgan with the Connecticut Department of Transportation says workers were prepared. Highways were well lit. We keep track of our highway illumination, making sure that uh, those bulbs are on and that they're working. And if something does burn out or break, that we get out there quickly to address it. For those who wish to navigate smoothly and quickly at the airport the next few days, arrive at your terminal 90 minutes before your flight. Be aware of any alerts from your airlines in case changes are made. Check your parking options before heading there. And if you have gifts, place them in bags or wrap them at your destination. And of course, we all like to have fun during the holidays, but having fun comes with consequences if one wrong decision is made. DOT has partnered with state and local law enforcement for their Drive Sober, Get Pulled Over initiative. Please do not drive drunk tonight, this weekend, any time of the year. Use public transportation, use a ride share service. According to the Connecticut Airport Authority, between December 20th and 31st, they expect more than 110,000 passengers will travel out of the airport. The busiest travel times will be between 4 and 7 a.m. One holiday's over, one more to go, and state police are making sure everyone rings in 2024 safely. Troopers are stepping up their enforcement over the next few days, cracking down on distracted and drunk drivers. Police are reminding everyone to find a designated driver. Between the period of December 30th and January 2nd last year, state police responded to nearly 5,000 calls and made 36 DUI arrests. Gloomy start to the day, actually just a gloomy day period. <laughs> Really? I mean, we just kind of want to know at this point, will we ever see any sun, Ryan? Ever, Ryan? Ever? Gloomy week. I can't really yeah. remember the last time I saw sun. And we do have some in the forecast, but patience is required. It's not going to clean up that quickly, and you can see why. The weather map is pretty unsettled all around us with lots of clouds and still some showers. Around here, the steady rain has ended. There may be some mist and drizzle in spots, and it looks like we do have a couple of steadier showers going through uh, parts of Litchfield County, headed into uh, Washington, Litchfield, New Milford, over to um, 
Danbury and Southbury at the moment too. So we'll go hour by hour tonight and it's more of the same. The temperatures won't be dropping much. It will be cloudy, dreary with mist, drizzle and a few showers. This is six o'clock tomorrow morning. Not any steady rain, but a few showers will be out there through the morning and midday and then the afternoon should start to turn a little bit drier. So the wettest part of the day tomorrow likely to be the morning. Mist, drizzle and showers out the door tomorrow morning. 43 degrees at 6 a.m. and we only get up to about 40 seven or 48 in the afternoon. Another strange thing about this week, there's only been about a five or six degree difference between the morning low and afternoon high. It seems like each and every day, and that's what the clouds will do to you, uh, whether it's this time of the year or more likely in the spring when we get into a weather pattern like this. As I mentioned, though, there is improvement coming. We'll talk about when that arrives, whether or not there are any more storms in the forecast too, coming up in about 10 minutes. Ryan, thank you. Hartford police have made an arrest in connection to a fatal dirt bike hit and run from over the summer. Avani Butler is accused of hitting and killing David Hicks back in July at the intersection of Windsor and Loomis Street. Butler allegedly left the scene. She is being held on a $450,000 bond. Waterbury police have made an arrest in connection to a homicide from last week. Sean Lawrence is accused of stabbing Jose Varola on First Ave after a fight. Varola was pronounced dead on scene. Lawrence is being held on $3 million bond and police say they expect to make more arrests in the case. New Milford police have arrested an accountant for allegedly stealing from a client. Carl Anderson of Anderson Accounting and Finance LLC is accused of stealing $25,000 from a client. He was released on $100,000 bond and is due in court on January 3rd. Police say they are investigating additional complaints made against the accounting firm. A group is coming together to push for Connecticut towns and cities to have the option to ban the sale of small alcoholic knit bottles. But there's some, but they are facing some opposition here. Fox 61's Julie LeBlanc joins us live from the Green in New Haven with more. Julia, what are they saying? Hi, good evening to you. I want you to take a look at this situation here on the New Haven Green. It is exactly what Nix the Nip sure members are boxes. trying to avoid. People using these liquor bottles and then just disposing of them wherever they want. But people opposed to the issue or their idea to solve the issue, they say, is not the solution. We are standing next to the exact situation here on the New Haven Green that Nix the Nip members are trying to avoid. People using these small alcohol bottles and then just disposing of them wherever they please. However, people who are against this proposal say banning the nips in certain towns and cities across the state is simply just not the answer. If you walk around Connecticut, you're bound to stumble upon one of these. I just started collecting them to see how many I would get in a walk. Something Cynthia Chesky started a year ago, collecting more than 60,000 nip bottles in Bristol alone, inspiring her to create a group with another advocate, calling it CT Towns Nixing the Nip. It's an environmental issue, and we want towns that care about the environmental issues to have the choice to ban NIFs if they choose to. Now the group is hoping to work with lawmakers to draft a bill to change the current law, which was passed some 90 years ago. I'm looking at Connecticut saying we can do better with our trash issue. And the NIFs are just another component of the trash that is affecting our environment. It's chaotic and it doesn't work. Larry Cafaro with Wine and Spirits Wholesalers of Connecticut agrees NIP bottles contribute to litter, but this proposal, he says, would do more harm than good. One thing we want the public to be sure of is a consistency in policy, especially policy that regulates an intoxicant. Two years ago, Cafaro and others with the nonprofit Three Tears for Connecticut pushed lawmakers to do something about this issue. We came up with an idea to charge a surcharge in environmental fee specifically for the purpose of cleaning up nip bottles. That five cent fee on each nip bottle goes back into the municipalities to work on cleanup efforts. So far, it's generated $9 million for all 169 towns and cities. But Chesky feels the problem is still persisting. The five cents, it isn't solving the problem because the five cents people are still 
throwing them out on the ground. Now, Cafaro says that package stores in Connecticut sell about 94 million nip bottles each year. And for a lot of them, this would be a big hit to their business. However, we do want to remind people once again, this is all just a proposal at this point. We are in New Haven, Julia LeBlanc, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. All right, Julia, thank you. The Planning and Zoning Commission in Torrington has voted unanimously to allow Trinity Church to provide an emergency cold weather shelter this winter. This after other locations requested fail. Fox 61's Lindsay Kane is in Torrington with those details. The shelter is set to stay open through April. Right now, the city is housing people in hotels with dollars from the American Rescue Plan. Now, residents speaking out in last night's meeting all in favor of this shelter plan. Other churches here in the city did put in requests to have an overnight shelter, but those requests were denied. The Planning and Zoning Commission denied an application from Northwest Hills Community Church. There was some debate over the location being too close to schools. Last night, the commission voted on an application from Trinity Church to change the zoning rules so they could provide much needed shelter. Dozens of people got up to speak at the meeting. No one in opposition to this shelter, but instead people were rejecting arguments that a shelter could pose a threat to nearby schools. What you need to decide which probability is more important in this instance. We are working to find out more details about exactly how many people can stay here and how soon the shelter will open. Torrington is one of many places where people are experiencing homelessness. A report from the Connecticut Coalition for Homelessness says there are 3,000 people across the state without a home and around 1,000 people without any shelter this winter. In Torrington, Lindsay Kane, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. So